Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We're gonna have a look at the monthly delivery numbers that uh, got released yesterday for the Chinese uh, electric vehicle market. And there's a little bit of a confusion going on here with NIO's numbers. Remember that until the third week of October, actually you could say three and a half weeks because these numbers starting here, if you look at the 5, 000, uh, 4,700 or so, which included Onvo and the classical NIO deliveries, this was for October, the September the 30th until the 6th of October. So most of these 4,700 are obviously in, in October. Then we got 5,600, 4,800 and 5,400, which totaled to 20,500 exactly. And we can see here that there was actually four working days left, 28, 29, 30th and the 31st. So I expected that we could have another three or four thousand, maybe come in at uh, I don't know, let's say twenty-three, twenty-four thousand, right? But then the numbers came in, and we can see that the monthly deliveries for New York came in at twenty thousand nine seven six. So the question here is why the additional four hundred or so cars? And I'm not sure what's going on here actually. Maybe you can in the comment section put your ideas. Uh, what do you think happened there? Because it's quite a huge difference, like even if they would only deliver 500 cars on those four days each day, we should have well above 22,000 cars. So yeah, what happened? I don't know. Remember that the daily delivery number for NIO over the past six months has kind of increased to first to 600 and then 700. And I think if you consider that the first uh, 10 days or so of this month was uh, roughly first 10 days for the Chinese holiday, and if you exclude that and you have, let's say, just around 18 uh, or let's say even less than that, maybe 16 working days because there was a holiday, you could see that the delivery per day should be around 750, 800 or so. So the question is, why did we get such a low increase over the last four days of the month, especially knowing that traditionally we have an extremely good, you know, last week of uh, the month usually. The last week of the month, they have always, you know, impressed the most. So I'm not sure what happened here. It's um, it's also interesting because they said that Onvo would be around 5,000 cars. They managed to do 4,319. We can see here on the press release here that of the 21,000 or so cars delivered, Onvo consisted of uh, 4,319. And the traditional Neo brand, the main brand, consisted of uh, 16,657 cars. So... I was, uh, I was kind of fearing a little bit as Onvo started to ramp up. My question was, you know, is Onvo going to cannibalize on the NEO numbers? And in one way, this kind of looks like it, sadly. It looks like, you know, the total volume has not gone up. But uh, what's happening is that Onvo is cannibalizing on the traditional NEO brand. Or is it something else? Because remember, again, we had those, you know, however many days, like six, uh, seven or eight working days, that was a Chinese holiday. So you could argue that these numbers at around 21,000 is actually very good when you consider that essentially one week was a Chinese holiday, right? So if you go to the monthly delivery numbers, this is quite interesting graph. So that, that could be our, this is essentially our sixth straight month of 20,000 or above deliveries. But then again, whatever I mentioned about the Chinese uh, first week of the month being you know a chinese holiday the same kind of is true for the other brands so if you go if you go to expand look at expense numbers despite you know they have the same issue it's not like it's chinese holiday only for neo right it's chinese holiday for expand for tesla for all the others and if you look at expand for example they seem to be able to better their numbers by around 3000 or so 2500 but then again if you look at li auto they went back a little bit, very minor, but still. But then BYD did better by around uh, 80,000 or so. So it's very difficult to say. I think just, but I'm not disappointed with these numbers. Remember that maybe I was a bit uh, too optimistic, especially considering that by end of the month, I was kind of getting away with the fact that it was a Chinese holiday, right? So again, 21,000 is good. Now, are we going to see, you know, close to 30,000 in November? I don't know. Remember that they ramped up the the plan of ramp up was that five thousand in October, ten thousand in December. 
here we can see 5 October 10 in December let's meet halfway there and say we're getting seven and a half thousand in November right it's difficult to say but and knowing that we just had 4,300 or so in in October and let's say if our midpoint of those two data points is you know October and December seven and a half let's go you know 1,000 below that or 1,500 so my aim is maybe for Onvo to have 6,000 deliveries in the coming month of you know November is that possible and how much of deliveries would we look at then if, if Onvo is at 6,000 if Onvo is at 6,000 we would need 22,000 of um, Neo classic deliveries in November is it possible I don't know to be honest remember that they just got 16,000 just below 16,000 17,000 or so in in Neo deliveries so in order to see a uh, you know above 26,000 delivery month you would need well above 20,000 deliveries only on NEO and due to the fact that this month was back from 20,000 of NEO to 16,657 makes it a bit more challenging but then again we always had you know the one week the one week that was the Chinese holiday so if if that's you know the reason why the deliveries didn't go to 23, 24 then yeah then I think we can have at the bare minimum 26,000 deliveries in, in November so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna for a moment until we know, let's say we're at least one week or two weeks into the month where we have the weekly delivery numbers come in. And if I see that, you know, next week on Tuesday, we have, I don't know, six, seven thousand, that votes were for, you know, the month of November. Because if it's six, seven thousand there, another six, seven thousand, then yeah, we could definitely see just below 30,000 deliveries. So let's wait and see in regards to the numbers. But uh, I didn't manage to find anything also on Twitter. You know, some people say that it's uh, under-reporting. I didn't see any basis for that. There was just a, you know, theory uh, uh, circling around. And then, yeah, so it's difficult to say. And then going to the, you know, the infrastructure, the Neoswap service. Sadly, again, the issue here is that it would be fine if the swap stations, the expansion would be a bit slower again. Because remember, in the summer, they kind of slowed down, but now they're ramping up again. So as the ramping up, sure, the daily swaps kind of keeps going up. I think the average on the past uh, month has been around 78, let's say 80,000. So I'm going to revise this number. In fact, let's revise this number to, let's go with 80,000, right? Just for sake of it. You can see that this brings us just below 31 swaps per station. So at this rate, I think we could finish the year with maybe not 35, but maybe, I don't know. Yeah it's possible okay let's say it's possible with 35 so it's well above the beginning of the year which was you know in the low 20s so now we are in the middle of 30s most likely by end of the year i'm happy with that it's a nice evolution but i would love to see you know them slowing down on the expansion of the swap station because remember as as we looked at the the margins for this previous quarter that was reported on q2 quite recently and if you compare how much loss they make, they are still close to 700 million net loss, right? They're going to survive, in my opinion. I made a case for it, you know, if you look at how much cash cash position they have. I think they're going to do, do well and they don't need most likely maybe one more, you know, one more additional capital raise possibly, but nothing more than that. But that's, you know, at this kind of low valuation of, Look at it, 10.8 billion. So it's yeah, it's it's a, it's not great. It's not bad, but it's not great. I would say, I'm neutral at the current stage. But this the thing with Neo is that it kind of changes all the time, right? Neo is uh, <laughs> it's it's very difficult to kind of know what they're doing due to the additional difficulty of expecting how the infrastructure, like i.e. the battery swap station, gonna affect the company. One month or two months, you'll see that they're slowing down in the expansion and the utilization rate goes up. And then you're optimistic about, you know, how much loss they're making on the swap stations. And then the next week you wake up and you see like, you know, they're doing like, I don't know, 10, 20 swap stations a week. And it's just make it, you know, very difficult to have a clear idea of where they're going. But if you remember that Xiaopeng, Xpeng, they also had their earnings uh, quite closely to NIO. And you could see, if I recall now, that they made like a loss of around 200 million. And I can see Xpeng doing, 
you know, break even faster than NIO quite clearly right now, especially if these numbers all hold uh, continuing. Remember that Xpeng did, I don't know, almost 24,000 cars in the past um, in the past month. So it's it's a great, great number for Xpeng, better than NIO had ever had. And it's a huge jump just compared to July and August. You remember July and August, they had 11 and 14,000. And after Mona 3 entered essentially end of August, we we're at 20,000, 21,000 and almost 24,000. So it's a case where I'm thinking, you know, hmm, maybe I should diversify my investment in EO a little bit. Um, yeah, I think actually I'm going to do that currently. I think just to, you know, reduce the risk a little bit and also... Again, I believe in you in the long term, but I think if if you look at Xpeng, it gives you at least exposure to the more traditional way of EVs, you know, without the battery swap systems. I think Neo will do great in the future, but maybe why put all eggs in one basket when you can at least have some some lesser extent of risk and you know exposure to a another company that doing essentially same thing but without the battery swaps. Uh, or potential or problems so it doesn't mean that i'm gonna you know selling all of my neo not, not at all i still really like this company i think the valuation of both of them are very small you could argue that neo should be much higher value than xpeng due to the you know year to date numbers in fact if you go back and look at the look at the year to date numbers look at neo is you know fifty thousand higher than xpeng so let's say 40 percent higher deliveries year to date with higher sales price average sales price but then again, as always, they have the cost for the battery swap systems, and that affects their margins. Neo's margins are higher than Xpeng, but Xpeng doesn't have to, you know, pay extra for the battery swap system. And so long as Neo doesn't make money on the battery swap system, I think there's a potential that Xpeng will perform better on the stock market due to the, you know, cash burn rate will be less. So people maybe will see that, okay, the break even is closer than Neo. But let's see. Maybe we'll get surprised on the uh, on the let's say positive front. They they had the the CEO of Neo had a, a few comments yesterday about the delivery numbers where they're talking about maybe sure the Neo numbers was a bit lower than maybe people expected. But this means also that they haven't you know decreased the price as much as people have wanted. So they want to retain the margins and let Onvo do the volume sales. So it's it's a very dynamic situation. But I don't want to, you know, go away from this video thinking that I'm, you know, bailing on Neo, not at all. I'm just thinking, you know, maybe for all of us, it's it's good to not have everything in one basket. And so that's what I'm thinking about expanding a little bit. Maybe if you like, I, I should start to do a bit close, um, much more closer view on expanding as well, weekly as I do with Neo. Let me know if you would want to see that. And yeah, so that's going to do it for today. Just a quick update on how it's going. And I think the... Next week on Tuesday and the week after on Tuesday is going to be really important numbers for NEO and hope, hopefully they'll get at least 6,000 on each week. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. I think I need to fastly get to the, you know, 1,000 subscribers and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.